This is Linton Bay, a marina on the eastern coast of Panama. And this is our Lagoon 450 catamaran that I've been bringing back to life over the past year. The day we arrived, I said we'd be done in four weeks. We're gonna spend a good three, maybe four weeks here fixing everything. But with each repair, we found more issues. And with each new issue came more projects. One month turned into two, and then two somehow turned into 10. But today we reach a huge milestone. We're just two fiberglassing sessions away from completing the rebuild of the main bulkheads. The very foundation of this boat and the entire reason why we came here in the first place. Oh, good morning. This is where I've been sleeping since Parlay abandoned me, left me here in the boatyard homeless. It's actually probably a good thing because I was a little bit too comfortable in that cabin. I've got beautiful views of the stars, not a lot of headroom, but that's okay. Let me give you a tour of my crib. Bring one leg over, other leg over, pivot, pivot, your shoulder will release. There we go. This platform actually took a little bit of designing because back seat, it's actually a lot higher than the front dash. And these are the two supports that I'm using. After a bunch of trial and error, I figured out that if I drop the front seat back, it would be the perfect height to support the back seat when you flipped it down. The heart of the Kia Picanto tiny house system begins with the sleeping board. I had to wrap it in plastic because it was off-gassing a weird smell that made me sneeze all night long. I cut it to match the exact contour of the interior wall and made an extra support that spanned the width of the trunk. This leaky camping pad was from the days when I thought I was going to be a through hiker. It lost all its air every single night, but hard surfaces are supposed to be good for your back or something like that. I stuffed the whole pad into an old duvet cover, which meant every time I flipped it over, I would have clean sheets. This massive terry cloth towel blanket thing came from some random boat. It kept me warm when it rained and was so efficient at absorbing sweat the rest of the time. Now getting into bed wasn't exactly the easiest. My shoulders are too wide, so I have to do this contortion. I totally extend my right shoulder and then I scoop, scoop, scoop. Ah, there we go. This is how I sleep. And then my arm falls down. I have to bring it up onto the steering wheel, wedge it so it stays in place. Relax. And now we're in my office. Steering wheel desk, clamps right on. New MacBook, so much faster. And this is where the editing happens. So what do you guys think about my new house? And my office. And my dining room. Oh my God, that took so many tries. Think we've done enough procrastinating? Should we go do some work now? Layered the entire floor with paper so we don't have to worry about those little splashes of epoxy that we have to rush to clean up. We really should have done this from the beginning. The fiberglass on the bottom of my feet rubs all along this pant leg and transfers all up and down my thighs. So I've learned to do this little number so I can slip my foot directly into the booty and avoid getting any glass fibers up on my legs. Just a little pro tip. What did we learn last time, guys? Make sure you wear your hood over all of your hair so you don't get resin all right here and be forced to shave your head. That's the biggest one. <laughs> Holy shit, man. <laughs> this is all gonna go. <laughs> we gotta go shorter. I'm not shaving the sides. Okay, we're okay. leaving it at that. <laughs> Protect that hairline, baby. I finally convinced Carlos to suit up. Look at him. PPE, brother. We're in the forward left cabin of the boat, and believe it or not, this is the second to last fiberglassing session, and then the main bulkheads are fixed. And the key is to not drip too much of this stuff in the bottom of the hull. We'll get all this cleaned up once we're done. The bulkheads are a massive structural wall directly under the mast, and they run the entire width of the catamaran. We've already tripled up the wood in previous videos, and right now we're reinforcing the backside with several more layers of fiberglass. Once reinforced, these bulkheads are then connected up into the deck and down into the hulls, and everything works together to spread the load and support the thousands of pounds of pressure from the rigging in the mast. Okay, bueno. We typically wet out the fiberglass before laying it up on the wood, but we didn't have enough room for these big pieces, so they had to go up dry. It takes much longer to saturate the glass when it's on a vertical surface, and you end up wasting a lot of resin from all the drips. To connect the walls to the hull, also known as tabbing, 
you need to create a fillet with a gradual radius to bridge the 90 degree corner so the fiberglass can transition smoothly. Usually we mix some thickener into the epoxy and then just mush it on there, but it's super messy. We just got these tubes of pre-thickened epoxy called Thixo that you can shoot out of a special caulk gun. They have these self-mixing tips that mix in the hardener as it's being applied so you never have to worry about it hardening too fast and wasting a batch. Here comes the first layer of tabbing to connect the bulkhead to the hull. I'm going to smooth the glass onto both surfaces first, and then I'll gently push it into the fillet. Most people like to use foam rollers or air rollers, but I can feel so much more with my fingers. I feel like I get a much better bond when I use my fingers. I can actually feel the air bubbles popping as I wipe it over the fiberglass. Tiny little bubbles. I'm going to get a little closer and see if you can hear it. As I run my finger down that corner right there, I'm creating the fillet, making it the perfect radius. You can also let the fillet dry first and then glass over it, but then you only have a mechanical bond. And you see it right there? That's all white, that's still air. And you can hear that air just popping out of it. By doing it all in one step, you get a mechanical and chemical bond, which is a lot stronger. The epoxy in the fillet literally becomes one with the resin and fiberglass you're putting on top of it. We did a total of three layers of tabbing, and if you look closely, you can see that each layer is offset by an inch or so to spread the load. When the curve gets a little too curvy, the glass needs to be cut so it can lay flat. You have to make sure to offset the cuts as well. Now we're further inboard and tabbing the tripled up section of the bulkhead to the thinner existing bulkhead. It's all about spreading the load and eliminating secondary stress points. The fiberglass has to step down the thickness of a piece of plywood, so it needs a fillet as well. Same deal, squeeze out all the air, shape the fillet, and make sure the fiberglass is bonded into the thickened epoxy. We went with three staggered layers here as well. There was a bit of extra cutting to fit the pipe at the bottom. That was by far the toughest glass job we've done so far. And I also left my camera here in the salon while Alexi was grinding, so now it's just covered in dust. I hate fiberglass dust. <laughs> As you can see, the resin is everywhere, stuck to my shoe. Ugh. Carlos and I are going on a little adventure today. We're going to the city so we can get some more fiberglass. We ran out yesterday in the middle of glassing. We basically lose a day of work every time we have to go to the city, but I secretly love it because it means we get six hours of skin soothing, humidity crushing air conditioning. We are at Fibra Pintura, which is the only place in Panama that you can buy rolls of fiberglass. Most of the stores in Panama have an elaborate four-step purchasing process. The first person takes your order and makes an invoice. The second person takes that invoice and gives you a receipt after you pay. The third person checks the receipt and requests the product. And finally, the fourth person brings it out to you. That's our glass. An entire roll, something like 150, maybe 200 pounds. All I know is that I can't lift it by myself. It's actually only 110 pounds. This is 1808 fiberglass, which is as thick as it comes. The roll is just over four feet wide and 150 feet long. We tried to carry it up the ladder, but failed miserably. So I rigged the blocks from the dinghy davits and made a simple pulley to get it up. It later evolved into this elaborate system that let us hang, jump off the boat quick and land soft on the ground. So we didn't have to use the ladder anymore. It was inspired by that thing in the movie Waterworld that Kevin Costner used to get up the mast quick. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see us build that in the upcoming videos. We did it. <laughs> Fell out of the box. Almost lost it. <laughs> Mask, suit, gloves. Let's finish this up so then we can start glassing the midship bulkheads over here and boom, over here. And once we finish that, engine room bulkheads. And then we're back in the water, baby. We're supposed to be fiberglassing. You're probably wondering what we're doing down here. Well, before you start glassing, always do a last second check of the shape of your layer. If it doesn't fit perfectly, you're gonna be up there with the epoxy curing, trying to figure out how to cut it to shape. We did a quick check and it's totally off. Thank you, Total Boat, for hooking us up out of everything you gave us. Our favorite thing, electric scissors, baby. Didn't even know that existed. Lisa, 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 Lisa. We're using Total Boat's high-performance epoxy resin. It comes with pumps, but when you're making such large batches, it's much easier to pour and measure with the markings on the pots. We wanted to hit the five. Perfecto. 
Just to give you an idea, we went through about a gallon and a half of epoxy in this single fiberglassing session. Last glass session, let me run through what we're doing. Capping this, three layers. This vertical edge was the original weak point in the bulkheads, and these end caps ensure that the reinforcement pieces we installed will be locked together forever. Covering the front, three layers. Since we just made the main bulkhead ridiculously strong, these stringers became a potential secondary point of weakness. Not only did the entire front get three layers, but they were all tabbed into the hull as well. Covering the back, three layers. It's the same exact process here, but just the back side of the stringer. It looks easy sped up, but each side took about 30 minutes and required mixing multiple pots of resin. Walking in this top corner, six layers. This inboard corner was where the upper beam cracked and separated away from the bulkhead. We already rebuilt the beam 50% thicker, but these pieces will further tie the beam into the wall below and also make this corner invincible. These were the massive pieces we were electric scissoring earlier. We cleared out some more workspace so we could pre-wet them before they went up. We also pre-wet the wall as well. You can't tell in this video, but Carlos and I are so excited at this moment because these two outboard layers are the last pieces of glass that will finally complete our main bulkhead repairs. All right, baby, we're done. I'm gonna show you guys everything once we get it cleaned up in here. Ah, ah. I think we're done, baby. I think we're finally done. I'm gonna desuit, clean all this nasty resin off of my skin, and then we'll give you a tour of exactly what we did to rebuild the port side bulkheads from sandwich piece to glassing to beams to un carton uh, primer, por favor. Total Boat hooked us up with a four by four by four foot pallet, 1100 pounds worth of gear for us and Parlay and also James from Zingaro. But James from Zingaro, he left early. So they told me to just hang on to it and share the wealth. My neighbor here next door. Hey bro, you still need that primer? Yeah, I need some primer. Chris and Annie. All right, I'm gonna throw you some primer. You ready? Oh, shit. How okay. heavy is it? One, two, three, go. Enjoy. Gracias. Hey, do you need blue tape? They sent us blue tape too. Yeah. I come today to show you the final result of our completed port bulkheads from beginning to end. Outboard side, reinforced, two layers, tapped everything in. Six layers on the stringer along the bottom. Inboard side, we got the three cap layers over those three pieces of plywood. Two layers on the front side, two layers on the back side, tabbing from the bottom all the way to the top. Beams glassed into the ceiling all the way across, probably four or five, six layers. And then we also reinforced the heck out of that beam. Original, about that thick. New one, boom. And this, this is my favorite part. It's six strips that go around the radius of this corner right here that reinforces the weakest point. We got tabbing into the ceiling, tabbing into the walls. Let's check out the aft side. We got everything reinforced up into the ceiling. And you can see here, we added three massive strips that tie that top beam all the way into that lower beam. Hole up there was filled and the hole down here reinforced and three to four layers of tabbing all the way down. And just like that, our forward bulkheads are complete. Now we have to move to the midship stringers and the two aft engine room bulkheads, but those, they shouldn't take more than a few days. As my reward for finishing these bulkheads so quickly and I'm flying home tomorrow, take care of the boat and uh, I'm gonna be back in six days with the family. Gracias. Gracias, Alexi. Bye. Subscribe. And my dining room. My dining room. My dining room. My dining room. <laughs>